Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your average guy, John Corelli. I'm trying to get my hair nice. I don't know why. Hockey season isn't back yet. It's September. It's a little early, but as you guys know, I'm a big Islanders fan. They've been good the last couple of years. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about a really cool, crazy, um, excuse me, documentary I saw on Netflix uh, the last couple nights. I kind of split up. It's about an hour and a half long. And I don't have a long attention span anymore, so I watched it in a couple of 45-minute blocks. But uh, I wore this this morning because it was kind of chilly, believe it or not, although it's almost 90 now already. But it was like around, it was in the 50s, so I wore my little hockey sweater. In fact, I got to take it off already. That's how hot it is. And uh, <laughs> I, was at, uh, I was at Sprouts, and the late, one of the, there was a lady bag in there who had an Avs jersey on. And she kind of looked at me and said, oh, really? And I said, yeah, really? <laughs> I said, hey. Avs are my second favorite team. I hope to see you guys in the finals this year. I was hoping it would happen last year. And uh, then this, this, uh, the, the lady uh, checking out said, oh, dream on. I was like, now, when people just start talking smack and don't know what they're talking about, I, I prefer to light a candle rather than curse their darkness. So I said, well, you know these guys have lost to the Stanley Cup champions in the, in the last round of the playoffs the last two years, so they're pretty good. Uh, in fact, the consensus is if they had beaten Tampa Bay last year to get into the finals, they would have beaten Montreal. So this is a good team. So are the Avs. The Avs looked really good. They were on fire last year, and then they just stumbled. They won their first six playoff games, and then they lost their last four. They got swept after taking the first two games of the series against Vegas. Anyway, didn't talk, come to talk about that. What I did come to talk about, because it was kind of a good trigger um, for this, um, was a, a team that probably none of you have heard of, and if I find this, uh, this whole thing fascinating. Um, I called the Danbury Trashers. <laughs> and if you do, try, and I forgot the name of the actual the series of, um, I think, mostly sports-based uh, documentaries, but... You know, I think they do a pretty good job of usually uh, Netflix. Obviously, Netflix is a huge um, mogul of entertainment at this point. And, you know, they're making movies. They're doing, you know, they're making fictional movies, making documentaries. And this was pretty well done, I thought. So here's what happened. Uh, this team was born in 2004. Uh, the guy that ran it um, is a guy named Jimmy Galanti. Yes, he is an Italian gangster. It sounds like an Italian gangster. Maybe that's part of the reason I was kind of drawn to this uh, documentary. Three of my favorite things. The East Coast, Italians, and hockey. <laughs> so, so I got into this. And uh, so this guy was, he was, re he was a mobster. And he ran the trash business in Danbury, Connecticut. Um, now, Danbury, Connecticut is a big, Connecticut's a big hockey uh, state. It's a small state. But Rhode Island, Connecticut, um obviously Massachusetts, anywhere in, the, in New England, really. And they're big hockey people because it gets cold there. A lot of the kids are raised playing pond hockey. You get some of, some of, uh, some of the best players to play, ever play the game. Sorry, my eye is a mess. But uh, you really do um, You get some great people coming out of there, some great hockey players, because you, you can actually play it in the winter, and then in the summer you probably go to camps and stuff, uh, indoor ice arenas and such. Uh, so Danbury, uh, and they used to have the Hartford Whalers. Hartford Whalers were Connecticut's team from 1972 all the way until 1997. Then they moved down south to become Carolina Hurricanes. So there's kind of a void there. Even though there's a, there's a lot of hockey up there, you got the Boston Bruins, you got the Philadelphia Flyers, you got the New York Rangers, you got the New York Islanders, <laughs> um, and even Pittsburgh Penguins, kind of. Um, you also got the New Jersey Devils right there. So a lot of teams that are right there. So I think when the Whalers did started. Plotzing, and the Islanders also honestly could have uh, had this fate uh, befall them because they were really bad in the 90s and early 2000s, and uh, luckily uh, they didn't. Luckily they had enough of a fan base apparently to keep afloat, and now they're very good, and now they're getting a new uh, arena, and so I'm very excited for their future to just remain a team, if nothing else. Uh, but so, so, but there was a little suction, a little void, and so this, this, this city in, in Connecticut, Danbury, um, they, they decided the UHL, which is, a, you know, the, the minor league uh, equivalent, I guess, of maybe, uh, I don't know, baseball triple A, I guess. If you, if you can graduate out of the UHL, you're, you're going to the, the NHL, you're going to the big leagues, right? So they were a UHL affiliate and, uh, you know, they, the UHL decided, oh, let's try a team here. 
and Jimmy Galante with all his mob money and, and running, he ran the trash business. Um, and the FBI was, I mean, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but it was a crazy, crazy, it's a crazy story. So this, this Jimmy Galante buys this team or is, has enough money to, to, you know, fund and take care of this team that the UHL wants to put in Danbury. He calls it the trashers because he runs, he runs the trash game in Danbury and he'd done shady shit to, to keep it that way. He had burned trash trucks. He had kidnapped people. Um, he had threatened people and maybe who knows, maybe even killed some people. We don't know. Um, that was never proven, but he ended up doing about eight years in prison for, for the, the wrong things he did and the affiliations he had. Uh, so, so he calls his team, the trashers. And naturally when you're a, you're kind of a thug yourself, you find the thuggiest players you can. And that's all this. And Oh, by the way, to uh, even further kind of launder the money or make it uh, more legit and, not, and him not having to take care of this, he gave the team, essentially, he made his 17-year-old son the president of this, of this uh, team. 17-year-old A.J. Galante. <laughs> <laughs> the story's amazing. Like, so the, and, and he was really into it, though. Uh, A.J. Galante was really into hockey. He hurt his knee when he was a kid and, uh, and uh, couldn't play anymore, so he really loved the game. He was all, and he's a, you know, he's a 90s kid, so he really liked like WWE, WWF. And marketing, he made, a, for a 17-year-old kid, he knew what young people liked, and he became a marketing genius. And he like first uh, hired a lot of fighters, then got some some pretty good uh, skill guys, even guys that had played in the NHL. And uh, they also were kind of lucky timing wise because uh, this team came about in 2004, 2005. The NHL had, had a strike and a lockdown, so he was able to get a couple guys out of the NHL to make his team really good. Now this team only lasted two years. They lasted the 2000 to the the 04 05 season, the 05 06 season, and they came close to winning the, what's called, I believe, the uh, Oh, I forgot the name of the cup, but they have their own cup in the UHL. Um, and, but they were crazy. These fans, uh, apparently Danbury really needs entertainment. So they would just beat the shit out of people in these games. It was really, I think it was horrible for the game. And then they, they actually talked to the commissioner of the UHL at the time and his views on it. And he was kind of disgusted with what they were doing. But he was also like, man, these guys are packing out this house every night. They're making money. Uh, they're getting notoriety. And so it's good, even though it's bad for hockey, it's good for the league. Um, <laughs> but uh, they never, they didn't win the championship. They got to the playoffs both years. And just some of the brawls were absolute bloodbaths. And so while it was good for him, oh, and like A.J. Galante, like on their big screen would say, welcome to hell. <laughs> they had a section 102 right behind the visiting bench and they were just insane. Um, and so this team, uh, I'd never heard of them. I'm surprised I hadn't because it was really just a crazy little phenomenon that happened in this town. And then they had to disband once, uh, once AJ Galante ended up, or Jimmy Galante ended up going to prison for eight years because he couldn't, you can't have a crime boss running the team apparently, <laughs> or at least you can't if you, unless you know about it. So, uh, so yeah, this, but what I think happened for hockey that was good about stuff like this is that it actually, this was like the peak of, hockey being wrestling or boxing on skates right this is like and eventually enough purists like the commissioner of the UHL said this is not what we want our game to be yes fighting's involved but that's not all this should be you shouldn't be bludgeoning your I mean dropping gloves before the pucks even drop at the opening of the game uh, and and so the, it kind of helped evolve the game to what it is today. So I, I really like to kind of give the Danbury Trashers credit for helping take violence out of the game. Because it's like, but those fans loved it. <laughs> you see the footage, they're like, ah! I was like, I kind of, and that makes me wonder about people like that. I wonder about people who like violence that much if they've ever been in a fight in their lives. Because if you've been in a fight, in a really nasty one, you, I don't know why you like that stuff. I don't get it. Um... I don't understand watching men beat the shit out of each other. I don't understand the the appeal. Maybe it's something that I'm mellowing as I get older. Because like when I was a kid, I liked watching boxing. And then wrestling, never really cared about. But a hockey fight I did enjoy. But I thought mostly because it was hilarious. Because you got two guys on fucking ice skates trying to beat the shit out of each other. Not exactly easy to get leverage. So it's a skill I always respect. But I more respect the skills of uh, the skill players and, and, and that that has shown through now that hockey in general especially at the nhl level has decided to take a lot of the violence out of the game 
So, but it was an, if you get to watch it, check it out. Just I, probably if you look up Danbury Trashers, <laughs> and you'll love the thumbnail on this that I'm going to send. Uh, check check out check it out. Pretty interesting ninety minutes. All right, thanks you guys. Talk to you next time. Bye.